Um, I'd like to welcome uh, everyone on the call today. Uh, it's good to see um, <coughs> so many leaders uh, from so many uh, different uh, teams, all within the cloud token. And I want to start off the call by saying, we're all in this together, guys. We're all building this community together. And it's great to see so many teams engaging together. This is what it's all about, guys. We're all in cloud token. We're here for, um, to help build this, um, build this ecosystem into what we believe is going to be something special. Today, we're all uh, fortunate enough and privileged to have Ronald uh, to come on the call. So what we're going to do, guys, we have some questions prepared uh, by the community. Uh, Ronald has answered a lot in the past few days. So we're going to try to ask some different questions as well. So let's start. Okay, Ronald. The first question is, in the past two weeks, we had some issue around the memory pool. And then in the past few days, we had some issue with the two-step authentication. And also sometimes it's saying it's busy, come back later. Can you explain in a technical way, in detail, <clears throat> what's happening and also what's the solution as we scale forward? Okay, um, one of the solutions that we had, um, okay, um, uh, let, let, me, let me rephrase it. Um, in the actual solution, what happened was we uh, actually had one wallet address that actually sends out the um, conversions uh, to um, users address when they actually uh, do a Ethereum conversion. But, because um, there are too many uh, unrealized transactions, what happens is the memory pool gets full, okay? And when it's full, the account uh, for the Ethereum wallet gets locked, okay? When it gets locked, um, you can't do anything until the transaction is realized on chain. And when it frees up, then only the um, wallet can be used again. So to solve this, we actually need to create more accounts, okay? Now, when we actually create more accounts, which means that we need to have more um, assets like Ethereum to be placed in each of these wallet accounts, right? And each of these wallet accounts itself, because there are so much of withdrawals, um, doesn't matter if it's a, a, um, it's a 0 0.1 Ethereum or 1 Ethereum or 2 Ethereum, whatever, whatever number it is, it, it needs to wait, okay? <clears throat> so... We have 20 accounts now, 20 Ethereum wallets. Just imagine, each wallet we put in 500 Ethereums times 20. That's how much we need to put inside there. And the maximum is, is 500 is because we, we have to scale it in such a way that we, can, we can't put um, 10,000 for each, right? So where, where, where are we going to find the, the, the Ethereums to actually trade, right? So whatever's in this pool itself, we can use to trade, right? So mm -hmm. that is the problem now. We have to um, make sure that it is enough Ethereum inside there to actually um, to, to uh, handle the uh, conversions. And we need to have enough um, um, assets to actually trade. So that is the, um, the, the, the calculation or, or the balance that we need to find. Then what happened was I actually told the team that this cannot happen. It's actually quite of a, a waste, okay? So what we did was we actually um, used Binance itself as the um, the, uh, the the withdrawal the, the wallet to actually send this uh, Ethereum's out, okay? Because it, uh, Binance itself would have the mechanism to actually handle it through one account itself. Then that's the problem when it came up uh, uh, when the um, Binance locked five of our accounts, right? Which you guys uh, know about it, right? Uh, to you guys. So what happened then was uh, our lawyers actually sent a, lawyer, uh, a letter to them and um, they unlocked it, but it was like, you know, seven days, eight days later, right? Um, in total, um, from day one, they locked until the time they release, it's about 10 days. So in this 10 days time, what we, need, what we had to do was we have to break a contract with our second um, uh, uh, trader uh, we have uh, three all together plus us is four. We have to break one of the contracts uh, because it's a, it's a forward contract that we actually have to break uh, and it causes a lot of um, um, problems um, because when we break the, the, the trading account this way, we will lose the, um, uh, the, the revenue for that particular month. 
Okay, so we actually got the assets out to actually uh, put into all these uh, wallets for the uh, withdrawal. So that was uh, how we went. We went back from um, a a um, previous solution with twenty uh, uh, wallets, then down to Binance, which actually solved things, but Binance locked our account because of the bad press. Okay, which we are asking for um, the um, the damages uh, from them, and the uh, then we moved back um, because it was locked. So we still need to pay out uh, for the uh, withdrawals and the um, uh, the conversions. So we went back to the twenty uh, wallet uh, mode again. So now it's back at the twenty wallet mode. Okay. Okay, and regarding um, regarding uh, Binance and uh, what they have done. Um, what's going forward? What's the relationship like? Will they do it again to us? Are we going to move somewhere else? Is there some thoughts around okay. this? Um, what happened was we are starting to move our funds out from Binance into another exchange, um, um, a more friendly exchange. We have uh, got... Uh, <laughs> actually, um, I I'm not sure whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, uh, OK has been following um, the, the, the event. Uh, OK messaged us to say that uh, they are willing to offer us, offer us a home and uh, with um, free fee. Uh, that's what uh, uh, OK is offering. Um, and CEX is offering us uh, as well a free fee to actually uh, to be in the network. But there's a big problem with this too. Um, OK and CEX, um, yeah, number one is their uh, trade volume is not that high. Uh, so what we are talking, who we are talking to now is with uh, the rest of the bigger ones like the token uh, and uh, Coinbase, uh, GDAX, and the rest. So uh, we're talking to these few guys. Uh, we cannot talk to uh, Bitmax um, <coughs> because they are part of um, the uh, Binance team as well. So we're not talking to them. Um, and uh, the rest. So uh, we are actually trying to uh, spread our uh, assets uh, to more uh, other exchanges. Um, at the same time, we are looking at other alternatives in the uh, crypto space to actually get uh, revenue. Uh, one of the things that uh, is actually what we have been uh, playing with or, or researching is through uh, Compound. Uh, Compound Finance and uh, Celsius Network plus um, a group of um, other exchanges, which is actually performing uh, their lending uh, system itself. And the yield itself is not that great, actually, uh, but it can really help a lot. Um, we're talking about 19% to 21%, um, if we were to accrue uh, the uh, 10 different um, networks together, uh, that's per year. So you're talking about maybe 2% um, or maybe 1.78% per month or so. So that is what we are actually doing for Rogue uh, uh, in, in to, to, to actually test it out. Uh, that's one thing that we are doing. But um, actually, uh, hopefully, uh, we can actually get a, a secure answer from the token or the uh, or GDAX itself um, to have a contract with them, which our lawyers are working out with uh, to ensure that this thing don't really happen again and to actually make uh, um, the, the, the matter uh, much more easier. Uh, our lawyers have already sent a uh, letter uh, for uh, damages to Binance and uh, we are now in talks with Binance on, on this. So um, it's a million a day. So we are asking for uh, damages of 10 million uh, from them. And do they, did, did they really, did, are the accounts still blocked as we stand now? No, uh, they already released it um, about uh, a week or two weeks ago, uh, a week and a half ago, yeah. Okay, so the funds are, okay. And, now, when, and the last thing on this topic is that when people are having an issue right now with two-step authentication or there's too much mm -hmm. traffic, what does that mean right now? Okay, uh, we have already switched to the new, okay, what happened was this, right? Um, the 2FA uses HMAC. HMAC uh, is hardware authentication on your phone plus a time. Um, the problem with that was uh, because we switched servers, the, the time um, stamp was a bit different. So when the time stamp is different, um, it did not match the, uh, the initial um, uh, the, the pairing. 
So there was a, a, a <coughs> small problem there, but the engineers actually fixed it. So um, if it happens again, the easier fix is to first um, contact us as the, the, the CS. Uh, they will actually unbind it for you, then you just bind it again, then it will be fine. So first unbind it, then bind it again, then you'll be okay. Okay, no problem. Uh, thank you, Ronald, for the answer. I've got another question to you. Um, a lot of people asking how are we protected from the hackers? We're talking about wallet, for example, our application, also about uh, the blockchain uh, 4.0 and the systems and the fonts. How we how we protected by the by the hackers? <clears throat> okay, first is we talk about the funds itself. Okay, the funds itself are all hundred percent in exchanges. So if the exchange get hacked, uh, we can actually ask for damages from the exchange. So as I said uh, earlier on, we only look for exchange which has uh, insurance funds. Um, Binance is not a lot, up to seventy percent of our whatever uh, asset we have. So, which is also one of the reasons why we are still uh, parking about um, maybe 30% or, or 20%, 25%, 30% of the assets in, in there. And the rest of it is with the rest of the, um, uh, the, the capital uh, the investment houses, three of them. Okay. Um, so, uh, and they will actually guarantee our funds uh, from there itself. Um, now, for the application wise itself, um, we have uh, three uh, tiers of authentication. The most important one is the 2FA itself. Now, without the 2FA, uh, you can't transfer any funds out, okay? Uh, the second one is actually uh, using the card to actually log in. So uh, you don't expose your password um, uh, and, and such like that. The third one is actually using um, Cloudflare, uh, which is the uh, uh, web application firewall that is actually handled by a third party service, which all banks um, and big corporations actually use, which is Cloudflare. Um, in order for the hacker to actually hack you, they need to know a few things. Uh, number one is they need to know what is the IP address that you're actually um, hitting. Uh, but what Cloudflare does is actually mask our IP so that they, uh, the hackers won't even know where is the, the, the destination uh, of, the, of the servers. Okay, and uh, on our blockchain side, which is the lower layer itself, because um, Ori itself is not an open source yet, okay? Um, there are not much information about it as well. So uh, the probability of it getting hacked is actually very low uh, because well, we are the only one actually using it. So it's actually a closed source uh, 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 private uh, infrastructure uh, that we're using. And um, yeah, <clears throat> um, that's the uh, best answer that I can actually give you now. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, so um, Ronald, as we grow in the, um, in the community and, and as we grow as, um, as the project, um, we're getting bigger and bigger. And obviously, as the project matures, we, it's very mm -hmm. evident to all of us that you're the, um, you're the main guy leading the project. And that comes then uh, with a question that, what if anything happens, Ronald? What if something unfortunate happened? Like, how, how does the project continue and uh, where would uh, how is the what would it look like for everybody else that's in the community <laughs> okay um as i actually uh, answered this question uh many times uh, even though when i'm in uh, poland or uh, when i was in um uh, korea or taiwan um this has been brought up um especially uh, because they, they find i'm the only one that actually uh is standing up to um, the project and actually pushing things through. So uh, even, evidently, um, I, I'm the target for a lot of things. And uh, one of the things that in order for us to move on um, is the business continuity uh, side of this uh, particular um, uh, business itself. Like any businesses, okay, um, we need to have a business continuity plan. And one of the things that we have actually engaged the lawyers to help us do is to uh, have this corporate uh, com uh, com um, uh, corporate uh, conformity uh, to really uh, handle all of this. And, every and also, uh, it's, it's, it's actually uh, good as well because uh, in order to get the CSR license, um, we needed to actually uh, conform to um, the uh, ISO 27001, which is the security part of the, uh, the, 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 the servers, the, the software. And there's a, certain, there's a part inside there which is called business continuity plan. Okay, 
And what uh, is instructed for us to do is um, in in case, okay, if let's say um, our servers in Amazon blows up, okay, what happens? Okay, so now we have actually have two set of data centers, three set of data centers that is 50 kilometers uh, away from each other. They're all cloud servers. So um, the, the um, uh, provider itself would cover us from that. And the second thing is the person, okay, the, the people that is actually running the business itself. Like for me itself, if in case that uh, something happens to me, what happens to all the funds? Who can actually access these funds? All right. So there's only three person in the world that can actually handle this fund. Me, um, the lawyer, okay. Um, in case if uh, something bad happens to me, the lawyer, the lawyer has a set of keys, um, the two FA keys to actually access the Binance account. Okay. And there's one more with the operations um, uh, 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 person uh, that is actually in charge of uh, the, the payouts and the uh, withdrawals and the conversions, which uh, he's doing now. Okay, so uh, only three of us has these keys. But in order for that uh, that person, in order for him to actually send out any um, uh, uh, funds, okay, I have to approve it, and the um, the third person has to actually uh, uh, approve it. So. Uh, one is for approving, okay, without any keys, and one is actually for um, the the key handling. So that is uh, how it's being handled now for business continuity on our part. But uh, on in terms of engineering side, um, I'm not actually handling a lot of engineering. Uh, the engineering is handled by the um, uh, the the engineer uh, leaders uh, itself. We have actually three teams now to actually handle engineering. Uh, one of it is in actually uh, Malaysia KL, uh, which is going to be in the uh, Q Central office uh, soon. Uh, they will move there. Uh, we actually just uh, um, uh, bought over a, a, uh, a company uh, that actually, as I, as I told you, um, that um, is in uh, that has done eToro and uh, IQ options. Uh, that is actually for the Friday uh, Cesar uh, project, and um, uh, that is also a team in uh, KL. Uh, then we have a team in Vietnam um, actually that is handling the exchanges. Um, they are actually located in Landmark, um, very close to uh, the um, cloud office as well. And the last team is actually uh, which we just cancel off, um, which is the SQ2 team. Uh, we, we just uh, cancel off them. Uh, but uh, half of the SQ2 team members uh, left with me uh, back into YFC. So the YFC team itself now uh, is in uh, Singapore, uh, sharing the same office as SQ2, but only until the meantime, when our office is ready in Q Central, they all move over. So uh, that is what is being uh, done. Uh, in terms of engineering, we are fully covered. Uh, in terms of direction, probably I'm the only one, but in case um, uh, that's it goes for me, there's a game plan. Uh, I really wrote down the game plan and I've been sharing this game plan with um, all the members, all the leaders, uh, what, we, what we need to do and what are the steps to actually do it. Um, and each of these um, entities, for example, like Cloud Sim, uh, they have their leader, they have their own operations leader, to actually handle that particular uh, each portion itself uh, for Friday, for Jarvis, for uh, Rogue, for um, the operation side, each of them have their own leader to actually do it. It's just that um, we need uh, a bit more time to actually get the whole entire um, team to be moving smoothly. But I think uh, we have been doing quite well for the last uh, three months, uh, which you guys can actually. Uh, see the results uh, that we are moving quite fast um, with the with the um, prepaid card, the seams, and the rest of it is all coming out. Um, yeah, uh, well, basically that's uh, uh, what we have actually done, and hopefully um, we can actually do more uh, given more time. Okay, very good answer. Thank you, thank you, uh, Ronald. Everybody, uh, they are so thankful uh, for yourself and for your team for doing amazing job. Uh, with the trading, uh, with the trading, with the arbitrage, that we can earn six, seven, eight percent a month. Um, we know that's for you a lot of time for your team, a lot of strategies, full head of uh, thinking about BTC, about the um, other cryptocurrencies. But my question is, 
uh, and the questions that's coming from, from other members, uh, we're getting paid six, seven, eight percent a month now. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's how, how long we can uh, we thinking um, how long we can get this kind of earnings? Let's say one year more, two years, five mm -hmm. years, ten years, twenty years. This is what people wants to know. Or maybe okay. be strategy after let's say after one year or six months when we have, for example, Jarvis is full, no more people joining Jarvis. Mm -hmm. Okay, to make your head a little bit um, more relaxed. Let's say everybody will get 3% or 4% per month. Everybody will be happy. Everybody will be, uh, you know, more relaxed, more sustainable product. Um, mm -hmm. That's the question. How long we can expect this kind of earnings? Okay, um, it's a very good question. Uh, I've been asked this question uh, two times today. Uh, one is with the Venezuelan team. Um, uh, Vladimir, uh, that Paul uh, knows as well. Uh, and also uh, from the Chinese team that I actually uh, had an interview this morning. Um, very straightforward question. Uh, how long can this last? Uh, and, and is it economically sustainable? These are the two main things that um, a lot of people are very uh, concerned about. And one thing that I always say is, um, we have really noticed that the sustainability of um, paying 18.4% a month is actually very heavy toll on us itself. Um, we, have to, we have to work very, very hard to earn 0.7% a day, okay? Mm -hmm. To actually hit 21% in order for the whole entire engine to move. So we have enough money to pay Amazon, Azure, uh, the Cloudflare, and various things, office, people, and, and all the rest. We have to make 21% a month. And it is 0.7% a day, which is very, very tiring, okay? But the cool thing is, um, Jarvis don't need to earn all 21%, okay? It's split between four parties, okay? Um, we have, like, for example, Snap Innovations, uh, which is based in Singapore, one of our contract um, uh, capital uh, fund, uh, fund um, investors uh, based in Singapore. Um, they're doing arbitrage trading, and um, they can offer us about 6% a month. So you have 21 minus six, okay? Then we have a big cross, uh, which is based in the States, okay? That is giving us a very cool seven to 8%, okay? So you're talking about 13 is that, all right? And the last, um, I cannot share the name uh, because they um, are very, uh, they, they screw me up every time I say that name. <laughs> Um, Ron, you can uh, tell me after the call. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you after the call. Right. <laughs> when you when you stop recording, I'll tell you them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they are actually based in London, um, but their offices are uh, throughout the world. Um, they have in Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, and in in London. Um, very big uh, uh, company, and they are doing thirteen percent for us. Wow. Right. Um, so. Yeah, but uh, we are taking a, a huge risk because thirteen percent is actually uh, a non um, uh, a risk guaranteed uh, uh, product. So um, I know that we are, we are taking a risk to actually do that, um, but uh, that's the only way we can actually cover the um, the hole that was created by the previous uh, leaders uh, from uh, cloud. Um, they have been paying out. Um, it's not eighteen percent. They're paying out up to 20-30% at the beginning. It's really crazy. So uh, we actually have to do that in order to cover, which we actually um, managed to <laughs> actually cover back um, the, the hole. Uh, that's why now we are we're not afraid that uh, there's not enough to pay up. Okay, um, uh, which uh, that's why I say uh, in October it's a celebration event because finally we did the impossible. <laughs> so it's a kind of... Um, uh, to 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 pat ourselves on the back to say that yes, you've done something really great here. Yeah. So um, that's one of the things. Um, yeah, uh, but we are trying to move down from that into a more sustainable, um, uh, a more risk-free uh, uh, investment. So probably that will drop up to about six percent. So we have two six and one seven. Um, yeah, that will be um, good enough for us to actually do the payout. Mm -hmm. That's 19, right? Okay, thanks, thanks. And not including ourselves. 
Yeah, because there's a, there's there's a, run, do, there's yeah. a lot of people uh, new on the call, and there's a lot of people probably mm -hmm. wouldn't aware. Uh, like when you fully took over the project, uh, mm -hmm. if any of us were here at the start, guys, you probably can recall we were getting about ten to twelve percent a month. Yeah, okay. that's really that, crazy. Yeah? That payout, guys, was like let's say there sometimes was forty percent being paid out. So when Ronald mm -hmm. and the team uh, took over the project fully, uh, obviously they ran the numbers, did everything. This is when Ronald really took the took the, the role and the team that was there, and then they did a calculation. And you can see right now it's about 6%, 6 to 12. Uh, so they've actually brought it all, consolidated, brought it all together, made a proper uh, the system. So right now, guys, as Ronald said, like, you know, they've done a huge job in a few months. And that's when, when you saw Ronald taking over, that's when you saw transparency. That's when you saw the Binance accounts. That's when you started seeing everything in the system and everybody started getting credibility. So that's what's been done, guys, in just... Ronald, correct me if I'm wrong. How long did you take over the whole project? As a um, uh, it, we there was a big toggle in uh, March, uh, April. They were still fighting over it, uh, but uh, we took a stand. And in um, May, actually, uh, the beginning of May. So at that time, we only had ten days to actually uh, register Cloud Token Australia, as you can see that. Um, the registration date was uh, 10 of May, <laughs> and our event was 12 of May. <laughs> so, guys, cause guys, what you can see there is that, like, when we all joined earlier on, uh, and you can see, like, the honesty, uh, the Ronald's relaying key here, and basically, when we went out and met Ronald, a lot of us on this call would have joined uh, around then April, May, and then when Ronald took over, we all had a meeting in, um, at that event, and... Um, Ronald basically outlined what he was going to do and what happened with the people that moved on and moved on and what's going to happen with the people that stayed. And guys, I think we're all happy to say in the past four months what's been achieved and the direction it is going. And another question we asked Ronald as well, like because a lot of people are talking about withdrawals. If every single person in the system converts their cloud token uh, to Ethereum and everyone runs the project, the funds are there for everybody to be paid out, okay? And plus, we won't give the figure, but there's a, a huge excess there for the company too. So that's why Ronald says, we did it. We've got to the level that we had and we reshaped the company. So guys, that's fantastic. So Ronald, next question. I know you've answered this many times, but we want to ask this question again because there's many people on the call just joined Cloud Token. And okay, mm -hmm. question. What is the vision of the company for the next three years? How many members do you want versus how many users do you want? And the last part of this question, what's the plan to achieve this? Okay, um, I believe that this uh, question was targeted um, for me to, to expose a lot of stuff. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> um, we have a, a vision for a three-year plan um, to actually make up uh, to build up to a hundred million um, customers uh, with 1.5 million networkers to uh, engage or to sign up 20 million merchants okay um, these are not numbers that I plug out from the air uh, these are the numbers which uh, I, I uh, we calculated that uh, it would uh, give us a yield of about 10 billion in terms of uh, uh, capital, um, uh, the, our net worth will be about 10 million. So we are going to be a unicorn in three years time and no VCs. Okay, so how are we going to achieve 100 million members? That is a very, very good question. Um, through Cloud Sim itself, um, CloudSim is going to be a, a service whereby um, users uh, are able to put in um, small funds. For example, you're going to put in $10 or $1 a day. Uh, that's $30 a month. And you have a chance to actually um, deduct or reduce the amount that you pay for your uh, SIM. Uh, your service, SIM service. And by the time you actually accrued uh, up to about a uh, hundred uh, dollars, okay, you are probably able to get um, a four gig uh, service for, for usage a month for free. 
and at the end of the term of this, uh, for example, um, especially targeted for migrant workers, uh, they can actually take back their entire uh, invested amount and yeah, they get the service for free. So basically how we do it is through compound financing, as I said earlier on, uh, whereby we take their investment, uh, invested uh, assets to actually roll, uh, to actually borrow uh, to other um, um, uh, exchanges or other um, traders who need these assets to do short-term loan trading. And from that itself, we can actually hit about uh, 2%, 3% uh, a month, okay, from there. So uh, it is going to attract when you have uh, some sort of a free SIM data service, it will attract people, all right? And in Malaysia alone, there's 6 million registered migrant workers. Non-registered, probably another four. So you've got 10 million of them there. And you're talking about uh, not Thailand itself. Registered is about 4 million migrant workers. Non-registered, probably you have about eight or nine. So that is already about 20 million. And in Singapore itself, 1.3 registered migrant workers, um, probably about 1.5. Um, and all this actually is about 20 million from there. Not to uh, mention in Dubai, so you have all the uh, Indians, Bangladeshis, Pakistanis, and all around the world. Okay, we are only targeted at all this. But when all of these people use it for free, I, I believe that the, 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 we are the biggest MVNO uh, in, in, in Southeast Asia. Okay, and this will actually attract uh, many, many people to actually use the SIM. And from that itself, probably to get another 80 million uh, people to join in the next three years, it's uh, a walk in the park. Um, then one of the one of the cool things about this uh, 20 million uh, migrant workers are uh, every <laughs> every month end um, they will have to send money back home, right? That's a remittance, and that is where all the merchants comes in. The merchants itself, which is uh, being uh, signed up by the network marketers, okay, uh, they become cash points, and all these cash points now, all these merchants, okay, they are like banks. They're like ATM machines, right? Where, um, let's, let's give you this, I'll give you the scenario, right? Um, at a particular village in, let's say, um, um, Vietnam or, or Jakarta, or Indonesia, okay? just Indonesia alone, all right? Um, some small village, there's no bank access. So everyone keeps their money um, underneath their pillow. But there are a lot of uh, shops uh, or, or merchants around, small merchants. And this merchant somehow, um, uh, one of the members signs, signs them up, okay? And this merchant itself would to go to town to actually bank in the money, okay? So what happens is the merchant itself can actually collect the money from these people and without going to the bank, they can actually give uh, uh, Ethereum's to these uh, people, or these unbanks, and the Ethereum which uh, this uh, unbank uh, gets, they can put into Rogue or Jarvis, which actually gives them more uh, yield. And it, they, they, they are not locked down, uh, the money is not locked down, the asset is not locked down. They can still use these assets, uh, either in CTO or Ethereum, to actually buy stuff from the merchants. All right, so immediately we turn this unbanked to financially included. Okay, unbanked does not mean that they have no money. Unbanked means that that's just not included. Okay, because bank has no access to them. It costs too much for banks to actually start up a, a, a branch and the logistics is just terrible. But because all of them have mobile phones and they are all using the cloud sims now, right? So yeah, 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 the kids um, that is working overseas can actually just send um, uh, Ethereums or CTOs back home and uh, the parents can go to the convenient, uh, the, the, the merchants to actually cash out. And what is it in for the merchants? When the merchants do a uh, conversion, um, as you know, uh, the cheapest or the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, uh, trade for cryptocurrency is 2%. The buyer will pay 1%, the seller will pay 1%, right? So the merchant now gets 1% from doing this. And this is actually increasing their revenue. 
So you, you, you tell me any payment solution, gateway or whatever that is in the market now, who actually pays the merchant? It's always the merchant paying the merchant discount rate. They're paying more to actually execute a transaction. Now, when they execute our transaction, they get money, they get home. And it's economically sustainable. Wow. So this is just mind blowing. Just take, take a minute to, to really just imagine that, right? Um, if you will cover India, Thailand, Vietnam. Vietnam has 100 million in population. <laughs> and how many unbanked? I think Ali would know. It's about 70-80%. Right? You're talking about 70 million people that has no access to bank accounts. And now suddenly all of them use their mobile phones. They can travel. They can do anything. All right? And it is frankly not illegal. It's because number one is we're still back. We're still putting the money back into the, uh, the local um, uh, financial system. Right? So I think the government will love this as well. Okay, uh, we are actually helping them um, uh, evolutionize their, their villages <laughs> without them doing lifting a finger. <laughs> amazing stuff, amazing stuff. Ronald, next question. Um, when will the audit uh, take uh, place with, um, with Cloud? We spoke previously about um, another third party coming in and also mm. Second part of that question, uh, following from the audit, you also spoke in Poland about the mm. uh, dashboard uh, being implemented yeah. within the application mm. and give people a flavor what that will mm. look like, what they can expect to see and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, uh, before I actually go into that, um, I'd like to tell um, everyone how we actually choose what to build uh, first. In, what is our priority? The, First priority is to help members all get wealth. So anything that is, not, that is uh, regarding wealth generation, that will be the highest in the list, okay? For example, Jarvis, Rogue, Friday, all of this, uh, merchant affiliate programs, um, all of this will be in the highest priority. We'll do all this first. The second one is actually the ecosystem. Uh, things that has done with the, the, the merchant program, um, the POS, the um, OTC, the OTA, the uh, Grab uh, integration, and all of this we will put into the second priority. And the only third priority things are what looks nice and what we need to prove to people and all of the things, then that is the last on our list. Um, but uh, after coming back from Poland, I, I believe that um, uh, it's actually needed um, to actually do this. So uh, after we finish the, uh, after we are done with the uh, wealth generation, um, uh, the good news is uh, Rook is about to, to be completed. Uh, and one of the things that we uh, wanted to do for Rook was to implement it for the October 5th event. So from, uh, actually it was, it's supposed to be today. Um, uh, we will call it the, the mid-autumn uh, program. So um, anyone can actually just put in like um, one USDT in there and um, you get into a running to win um, the October 5th tickets. So uh, every day we will, we will find winners for that. And uh, from the $1 investment um, in, in this poll, we actually uh, will tell how much we actually gain from that. So we, we wanted to demo this, but um, the team itself uh, said that uh, let's keep it uh, to be a, a new um, shocker or a new excitement thing. Uh, when, when, when we do really launch uh, Rogue Out later on. So that will be one of the things. Um, one, one more cool thing that uh, um, we have actually uh, made a pact with uh, is, you know, the, the, the debit card, the, 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 the prepaid cards that uh, we are launching at the event? Yeah. yeah. Right? So uh, basically you need CTOs to actually uh, uh, to, to, to stake it, right? So... Um, one of the smart uh, engineers, he actually uh, did something which was really, really cool. So um, uh, it was just uh, yesterday night. Um, what happened was um, he managed to find a way to lock uh, resources uh, like Ethereum that you actually put into Jarvis. 
so you can actually have overdraft facilities, even though it's a prepaid. So let's say if you if you put CTOs uh, that is worth let's say five hundred US dollars, okay, in, into the card, and somehow you need to use uh, seven hundred, okay. And when you swap your card, and if you have the overdraft facility um, um, option on, we will let you swipe up to seven hundred. So if you have let's say five hundred in Jarvis, right? We will lock that 500 in Jarvis until you put back the 200 mm. with Ethereum or whatever. Yeah. So if it's Bitcoin, then it's good. If it goes up, then you it's free 200 for you. <laughs> <laughs> very good. Very good. Yeah. So it's it's pretty cool. Um, a a prepaid card that has all draft facilities that has never been heard of before. <laughs> And, and to say, and and for for everybody on the call, what's the safety of these cards? Because in lo, in our industry, uh, anybody mm -hmm. who's come with a prepaid card before, I use a company like PayPal. We all know something mm -hmm. called chargebacks, and they could actually take a company out of business. So a lot of us in this mm -hmm. industry, <clears throat> over time, would be concerned about these kind of cards. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, um, one of the things that uh, prepaid cards uh, cannot do is uh, any any that is not accepted everywhere. You must understand um, places like, for example, when you're on a plane, right? And um, the plane obviously obviously has no uh, internet connection, so you can't use the card to actually buy stuff on online uh, on the plane. Anything that's online, probably you can. But if you were to um, use it on Stripe, Stripe will reject these type of cards. Uh, Outright. So uh, one of the things is uh, that it's it's actually uh, blocked from um, a lot of these sites that uh, it's blocked from these sites that actually will incur a lot of chargebacks. Uh, but if there is a uh, that if there is a chargeback, okay, uh, well we, we know who the user is, and we we'll just block your CTOs. <laughs> okay. So, okay, so, okay, another question here, okay, is that, okay, I'm going to read this one over here. People believe, right, in general, that trading alone isn't sustainable. You kind of touched on this while ago. Long term, uh, long term, right, I will, uh, people will start to be con concerned hearing something. Let me rephrase this. People, I'll say it in my own words. People with regarding trading are looking at the project and everything is related to trading. You said previously before, once funds come in, within six hours they go trading, because I know you do velocity trading, it's the speeding of pairs. You, you worry about quantity, you don't worry about, um, about the price. No, so the question, will the project look at other aspects that's completely different, oh. um, different like the trading completely, and actually Definitely. split the portfolio, like one example, yeah. just properties or something, where does income coming oh, okay. in? Um, uh, it's, it's a super good question um, because it, it was also asked before uh, this morning as well. Um, this lady is, a, is, is a quite 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 um, quite amazing, right? Um, she she she's a Chinese, um, not educated, uh, but has been doing network marketing for 40, 40 plus years. And she was the first batch that's been in China and then um, got kicked out and went to Dubai and made tons. And the question she asked was like that as well. So are we looking at other sorts of revenues, okay, other than trading? Okay, uh, very straightforward question. Um, the thing is, yes, we are. But we, we want to keep it in the um, um, crypto, uh, 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 crypto um, circle, okay? Because crypto itself, um, if you look at it this way, right, um, a lot of things has changed. One year ago and one year now. One year ago, uh, let's say you look at uh, 2017, okay, um, margin lending option is not available. 2018, you have options, you have margin trading, you have lending, right? So all of this, actually, we are taking traditional money and putting back into the crypto world to expand its, um, uh, its size. Okay, uh, which I think is good. So in terms of trading, uh, uh, trading, making money from trading itself, I believe that um, it, it's a long more way to go. And it's actually becoming um, much better because the pool now is bigger. 
Okay, there are much more uh, traditional funds all coming in now, which can come in now. And the acceptance from countries to countries now. If you're talking about in 2017, um, countries would just outright say, no, okay, you can't do this. And everybody's doing it uh, underground, gray, and, and things like that. In China itself, they kicked up Binance. Binance went to uh, uh, Japan, and then they found out that uh, the FSA charges them an arm and a leg, then they went to Malta, right? <laughs> just look at it this way. But now, China say, please come back. Please come back. They say, that, oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm not a Chinese citizen anymore. <laughs> okay, I'm thinking, right? So, yeah, countries are beginning to learn that um, you, you, it's a cultural revolution, right? Blockchain is a cultural revolution. It changes the way um, people think and how you can actually control. So uh, the countries, uh, governments itself are starting to, to realize this and laws are bent or, or, or added to actually cater a, a lot for this, which we, we believe that uh, a lot in this crypto space is going to be a second boom coming soon. Okay, um, we just need one country to actually say that, hey, this is what we're going to do. Let's go and do it. Then everybody start to jump on board, right? But most of these countries are looking for a spark. And we believe that in Cloud Token, we can give them this um, standard operating procedure. This is how you can do it. We have 100 million users around the world, 1.5 million network marketers, 20 million merchants. We are trading. 10 billion a day, okay? What else you want? This is the blueprint. Take it, run it, right? Would so you like, trying to... like, as you, okay, I, but as we expand and as we grow with the numbers that you're talking about, would, would uh, from a company perspective, would you not look at like other like assets like properties? I know there's other markets in the world that are growing now. I know it's trading and crypto is where we're at and blockchain, of course. But would 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 you be open? I'm just saying open to looking somewhere else, you know? Yeah, we would actually um, look into other things, but in terms of properties and things like that, um, which we um, might not look at it in, in um, the short term. But um, when we have other C5 uh, leaders from the field uh, joining us, of course, um, as I said uh, earlier on um, in, in April, uh, when we first took over, um, we will actually have a committee, um, and the committee is headed by the uh, C5 or, or directors itself uh, to handle every project that goes into Jarvis that uh, the community can uh, undertake, okay? So the C5 leader that is actually in, for example, um, he found a very good project, which is, uh, for example, a um, cultural village somewhere in, let's say, I don't know, maybe China somewhere, okay, uh, that is trying to raise uh, a billion bucks, okay? And um, he's ready to undertake this. So the rest of the uh, directors uh, in the company itself can actually do a due diligence on it. And yeah, and then the project can come in after the due diligence is done. So uh, we have, a, we're gonna set up a committee um, that is comprising of the biggest leaders uh, in the industry to actually make all these decisions. Um, uh, for me to do, I'm actually trying already, uh, like, um, you know, the, um, on the beginning um, to, to um, run through a to trial to uh, how to get a consensus, right? Uh, by saying that, you know, do I uh, say that uh, I, I put a minimum cap uh, of withdrawal from 500 uh, CTOs and above, and all people say no, and then they tell me, you know, we're actually doing something like that. But um, of course, uh, in, in the long run, we, we, we try to make everyone to be involved in this because it's not just... Um, Putting money in Jarvis, getting money and then going out. There's, there's no, you learn, you gain nothing from here. What we want to do is to actually get everyone together to participate in this um, venture, go on to this journey, actually make a decision for how the ship is going to go. So, yeah, we are a big ship itself and we have a lot of noise, definitely, yes. But if we just get the consensus of the general direction that we're moving, so basically, that's what um, I hope that we can actually achieve on. Um, whether we're going to move into a property market or move into, um, I don't know, maybe some other uh, kind of um, uh, uh, investment and things like that. Um, at this moment, for me, um, a no. Uh, we will stick on with 
crypto, but not just only trading. Crypto has many, many different things uh, inside there. Uh, but something to do with crypto financing, yes, we will actually um, look into it and we will get consensus from the, the market, okay, to see whether uh, do we want to do this or not. Yeah, it's all, it's everyone's decision. So it's everyone's company, as I say from the beginning. Um, everyone can have a say, yes or no, and we will evaluate. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Ronald, before <clears throat> I start another question, I want to just come back to the, to the earnings, uh, six, seven, eight percent a month, because some mm -hmm. people asking me just now, uh, mm -hmm. because we've been involved with different kinds of programs before. And let's mm -hmm. say we, we, we're trading and we receive about six, seven percent a month now. So let's say in the future, your trading will go a little bit down. Then we mm -hmm. start to, to earn 3%, 4% a month. Is it possible mm -hmm. or no? Because I know in most of the programs, if the earnings go, uh, daily earnings go, go down, it means company doesn't have money. So we need to mm -hmm. clarify with everybody. If the <laughs> earnings go down, it means, for example, you earn this day or this month less. It doesn't mean that you have less money. That's, I want to the clarification. Mm -hmm. some, you don't yeah, um, it's a very good question, uh, Matthias. Uh, and one of the things that I want to uh, point out is uh, trading is only one part of how uh, cloud is actually getting revenue. Um, that is why we actually added in cloud sim to actually get revenue from there itself. Uh, remember, the 100 million uh, customers, they are not getting CDOs, all right? Mm -hmm. They are actually paying to get service. And this service, we earn money, all right? And all this actually is profit. So that's one. You just imagine a telco that has 100 million uh, subscribers. Who has that besides China, besides the uh, Aseta group, uh, which is a group of, of um, I mean, uh, telcos. India, um, you're talking about Reliance, uh, Vodafone, which is 300 million. Not much. So if you're 100 million, we are the top five, right? Oh, so and the 100, 100 million people will be helping us to getting more yeah. city and sustain yeah, one. Very good. Then we have our 20 million merchants. That itself, we get 1% from each trade, right? That is another source of revenue. Very good, very good. Uh, my another question is regarding the explorer of uh, fourth generation blockchain, because we're talking about this for many months. People believe this. But people also want to see. You just said a few minutes ago, for you, it's very important to, to generate the wealth for the members. But yes. some members say, or I will say even more, most of the members say, okay, well, to generate the wealth, people need to believe more in the, in the project. Mm -hmm. So that's why they, they're asking to release the, um, the blockchain explorer for yes. the uh, fourth generation blockchain, that we see the transactions, because we've got CTO, and people even sent to me just now, they're saying, oh, listen, uh, CTO is, is based on Ethereum blockchain, okay? Mm -hmm. we, we generated, there is four wallets in there. How is possible? Maybe there is no, no other blockchain. Maybe it's only what was created on Ethereum, Etherscan. So yeah. basically, when, when people see the, the, um, on the Aura blockchain, uh, mm -hmm. between, uh, between people sending CTO, this is making pe people to believe. So, People asking when the latest <coughs> this uh, work. Yeah, um, to, to answer this question, um, uh, as I also promised in Poland that we already released this, um, as soon as we finish the first uh, wave of the uh, wealth generation um, uh, projects, which our engineers have already started, then we will pull um, our next available resources to actually build the uh, uh, dashboard for uh, CTO. And um, just, a, just a bit to touch more on that, right? Um, uh, yeah, uh, I, I believe that because um, this project itself, we started on the wrong foot um, and we do not have enough um, education materials for uh, the marketers, the leaders to actually um, educate the, the market of how it is. So um, a lot of times where you guys are fighting a wall blind and you, you, you get to only hear bits and pieces and because um, you guys are really wonderful, um, you can really, um, I mean, I mean for, for, for you, Paul, you guys really do a lot of research into what is real because you know that uh, it, will, it will come back to haunt you 
later. But a lot of leaders, they actually don't do it. So they just keep taking information from China and you know, just lock, stop, barrel and just send it out. All right. Um, a lot of this um, caused a lot of problems. We, uh, we, we know about this. Uh, that is why this is one of the things that uh, we are trying to fix here, which is true education. Um, because more and more, um, there are a lot of people that has been brainwashed by uh, the, the uh, crypto, other crypto wallet, uh, which scammed them uh, in many ways. Just look at it uh, this way, right? Um, there are very big uh, wallet players, big sevens, okay, in, in the China, China market, the big seven. Uh, the biggest one closed down a month ago. And then following suit, Number two, number three, number four, number five, and all really uh, just just collapsed. Okay, um, it created such a big bubble. And when you talk about one to seven, right? None of them actually has done things like us. No one actually stepped out and actually have so much of Zoom calls with you guys. Get on Facebook, get on Twitter, get on uh, WeChat to talk to the members, to engage with the members, and even the um, <laughs> our current um, five uh, uh, leaders from China itself. They said, that, "What are you guys doing? Okay, this is not how the game is supposed to play. Um, Ronald, you're supposed to be a unicorn. You're not supposed to show your face. You know, then people would uh, want to see you, and then they will actually, you know, come for events." And I say that, nah, actually, that's not the way we're going to be. What we want to be is we want to be as transparent as possible. Anything that happens, we need to tell the public. That is, uh, that's our way. And they finally listen to us um, on how things should be done. So, frankly, we need to educate the, the market, um, which is um, very important. Um, and as, as I said, uh, the dashboard, yes, is important. We will actually do that. And hopefully, that can really help. Um, the, the leaders actually um, uh, uh, explain the misunderstanding uh, that we are on uh, ERC-20. Actually, we are not. Um, we never believe in a blockchain that uh, requires us to pay gas. Uh, uh, we, never, um, we, we never supported, we never want to support a uh, blockchain platform that uh, grew from um, pure greed. Okay, blockchain or Bitcoin was uh, grow, was started not from greed, but from a vision. The vision whereby everybody can use Bitcoin to trade without a value. It's like one Bitcoin or two Bitcoin or 0. Point something Bitcoin for an Apple. All right? They never say that 0. 0.1 Bitcoin is actually $1. Never was it done that way. And there's no way you can buy Bitcoins. You can only uh, mine the coins. Okay, you need to work hard for it. So that is the whole concept. And greed came on. Uh, it actually corrupted how Bitcoin was by just pegging a pizza to it. And now everybody has a price, right? Then how Ethereum came on was a bunch of VCs they invested in it and then they wanted to, be a, to have a price. So it, it grew from greed. So we never want to support a, a, a platform that grew from greed. Ore was designed to be free, okay? There are many platforms that are designed to be free. There's many ways to stop uh, people from spamming the network. And one of the things that uh, is done uh, that I, I, I actually admire is um, this project called IOTA. Uh, the way they actually stop, um, the, the, they actually revolutionized um, how a guestless uh, uh, um, a platform can be. And nobody can actually um, uh, manipulate it or uh, abuse it because you need to actually perform two actions before you can actually send an action out to send an operation out. So, you know, it's, you're always doing more than you are actually giving, uh, uh, sending out something to be done. And um, from that itself, we actually um, want to make it so that um, it's actually meant for uh, financial institutions to use, um, not like Ripple, not like uh, EOS. Um, so yeah, uh, that's why in CTO itself, um, we always uh, never wanted it to uh, be able to be bought. So it's not an ICO project. You'll never go on the exchange so that nobody can manipulate the price. And you know, later, who knows? Uh, we already started giving CTOs as uh, part of the salary to our own guys, and they accepted. 
Okay, so yeah, you know, these are the things that um, we, we want to actually continue on the legacy of what uh, the, the, the founder of Bitcoin uh, wanted to do, but actually lost control of. So yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, thank you for that one. Uh, quite okay. short answer is yes, we will do the blockchain uh, dashboard. <laughs> <laughs> we can't wait. Okay. Is, uh, a lot of people ask this. I know you answered it many times, but we'll ask again. Is there a separate pool, money pool, for salaries for employees that aren't actively sharing um, the wallet? People in customer service uh, team or the mapping team, for example. Yes. Um, they are under a tree. Uh, the tree itself we build for them. And in this account itself, um, all the CDOs that uh, uh, it's actually uh, accrued, is actually cashed out at the end of the month and uh, they are being paid through that. Okay, very good. And following from that, um, so, because some people got mixed up with that, they thought they were in the, the structure of the tree themselves, building a tree themselves. So basically mm -hmm. what happened is that you and the team and uh, some of the leaders, the, um, we say the founding leaders have built a separate mm -hmm. structure for them within the system mm -hmm. and they all get paid yes. from the structure. Perfect. Right. Clarifies an awful lot. So that, that shows then as you bring on more staff, more employees, more support, yep. all from that structure. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, next one. Uh, where you, you said in Poland, and uh, so I'm going to follow this. You said it's on stage. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Follow up here for uh, the team. Uh, did you decide how you were going to be live streaming trades like on YouTube and Facebook? Oh, yeah. Um, so basically, um, I showed you how the, the video wall was, right, um, in, in the video. So it's a very big um, 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 L-shaped uh, video wall. And the camera is going to actually um, shoot from the other angle side. And it's going to um, look straight into the room. Okay, uh, you can see um, the traders there. Uh, with the video wall showing the live trades. So we're going to actually um, live stream this uh, either onto uh, uh, YouTube or on yeah, whichever, um, probably our own um, uh, streaming service later. Okay, that's fantastic. And just follow, following on from that, a question that mm -hmm. everybody's asking is that the reserve pool. Um, mm -hmm. It, it, when people are asking, will that ever be shown? How can they verify it's there? What uh, <clears throat> qualification can we get around this? Yeah, um, we will show the reserve pool um, very soon. Once the dashboard is out, you can actually see it from there itself. So, um, it's actually uh, very much like uh, how die is. You will see the uh, total supply uh, versus the, um, the reserve pool that is actually uh, um, putting the assets to actually um, release the CTOs into the supply chain. So yeah, you will see all those figures uh, in, when we, the dashboard is up. Uh, <clears throat> Ronald, uh, I've got a question. I know you've been talking about the, about the, um, the SIM card that we're going to be. <clears throat> Can you just give only a few examples with the price, for example, somebody, let's say, pay $10 or $20, what he will get, if it's unlimited, not unlimited, one gigabytes, have you decided something? Or you, if you didn't decide, it will be decided on the event, maybe you, we, we shouldn't yeah. have talked about this. Actually, um, I'm supposed to go for a meeting on Monday to decide this. <laughs> okay, so let's, let's, let's move to another, uh, yeah. another question. Or you want to add it? Uh, ask the question. Okay. Another question here. This is going to be a very straightforward question. And I, before mm -hmm. I answers, I want to just talk about this first. There's been mm -hmm. um, we joined the project. Uh, it came from um, uh, it came from our uplines. I'm not pointing the finger at anybody. Just we just got the information, and only recently, Ronald in Poland, we were made aware of this. A lot of us in the team thought mm -hmm. rare plan paid infinite levels. And in, in Poland, we learned that the career plan pays down to 21 levels. Can you confirm that has always been the way from when the project started? No, the project started with infinity. That's why you have 40 over percent in, in payout. Uh, we kept it to 21 levels. So uh, if you have a perfect tree, it's about 18.4. Okay, no, the question is, okay, because when we, this was made aware to us in Poland, um, mm -hmm. news to us, when did this change take place? 
uh, April. April, okay. So guys, everybody on the call, because we have been doing webinars, and myself and Matthias only become aware of this in Poland. So sorry for the, if we gave out wrong information, it was genuinely, we didn't know. Um, so that was just a mishap that happened, but we want to just let everyone know on the call. So it's 21 levels and guys, I'm happy. I'd rather be getting paid 21 levels for 10 years than be getting paid infinity for six months. Okay. <laughs> I don't think you can even last for six months. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Two months. I agree, I agree with this. Um, okay. People always also asking if we can have more, some more details in our uh, app regarding the structures, level three, how many members we have. If, uh, because um, actually, um, it's a, it's a no, no, um, because, uh, in many countries itself, um, um, just to be truthful, uh, we are, we are in the midst of getting the MLM license in Australia to be, to be, um, released. So once we get the MLM license in uh, Australia to be released, then we'll take the same license to each of these countries that our members are in to apply for the MLM license. Malaysia, Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam, and the rest. Vietnam, probably, I don't think we can get, right? So uh, we have to um, follow our um, lawyer's um, advice to actually change it to become a rewards program. So that's why you see that we put rewards instead of something, instead of anything else. Um, and talking about the levels itself, right? Um, we can't give you uh, more than uh, two levels plus yourself is the third or uh, to the first and then second and then third right um, but uh, what we're going to do is this okay um, we're going to have a, a chat feature uh, that can let you pull your entire tree into a chat room so you will know how many users are there you can actually see all the members um, regardless of let's say it's four four thousand levels down you can issue, you can even get all of these guys in and you can actually chat with every single one of them but every one of them um won't won't be using their real name they can actually use a nickname to represent the number uh, it's just like an address so uh now you can have um for example Mateus dot uh yeah club token <laughs> dot millionaire yeah <laughs> so you can actually talk to you can create a uh, one level down two level down or n levels um in the chat group so uh and this is one of the ways that we can um hope to be able to let you communicate with your whole team effectively uh one of the things that we want to um resolve is the ability for you to communicate uh, now is i think it's very difficult because you've been relying a lot on um, people coming back to you, uh, maybe on a Telegram or something like that. Um, we wanted to use uh, a much more simpler platform that is dedicated uh, for this. Um, yeah. So this one thing that we're working on as well. Okay, Ronald, just going back in my previous question, a question came in there about the, um, about the career plan. Does it start mm -hmm. from the 21 levels? Does it start from the first level or does it start from level three? For where? like the twenty-one percent. Let's say if you're C one, you get five percent for twenty-one levels. Does it start mm -hmm. from the first it. level or level three? No, you okay from level three itself. It's uh, it's uh, five percent until twenty-one. It's com combination from three to twenty-one. Okay, so it's not from one to twenty-one. It's three to twenty-one. Yep. Okay, that's that's important. And that's important, guys. Okay, uh, Ronald. Um, a lot of people have asked this. And especially for some parts of the world, I know you're bringing in rogue and to mm -hmm. help um, people that um, are not in a financial position to get into Jarvis. But would it not mm -hmm. be a good solution or an idea to consider bringing Jarvis down to $250 to leave more people participate? <coughs> um, we actually thought about that. Uh, one of the things is uh, we have this pro program called uh, Project Holiday, uh, which is about $250 uh, US dollars. But um, we had problems to actually generate, uh, to generate yield, um, to, to cater for a payout that is um, high enough for the members to see um, a good return. So, um, yeah. And, and it's also quite dangerous for us. You know, the, um, the 16, 16 lakes um, um, whereby you build three and then you have 13 which are uh, funded but not touched, right? Um, that is actually the um, the supporting layer for us 
to actually ensure that uh, the payout can be done. Uh, because the whatever we're paying you is even out by the non-moving legs. Right, so um, the whole secret of the um, the the, lay, the the perfect layer tree is there to actually even out um, each of the payouts. So um, if it's two fifty, um, you you will have to have more than uh, twenty one levels. You have to have more than sixteen legs. So you probably have to have thirty or legs, forty legs. Then it's it's becoming like binary <laughs> with so many. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, I have. Um... I have a question here, right? I won't read all the question because it's a long question to do with Rogue. But basically, I know you haven't decided fully yet, but basically the overview of the question is like this. Um, let's say, for example, you raise um, 100 million, okay? And we're saying mm -hmm. the profit, like let's say the profit could be, let's 1. say 1.4, okay? So what the question mm -hmm. is this, instead mm -hmm. of that going out to a draw, to all mm -hmm. of it, could you not, let's mm -hmm. say, have 20% go to the reserve pool to back it up? Could you not have a percentage? Oh, um, you what we do is this. Into, uh, yep. Could you have a percentage that goes back into pay level one, level two, and level three for the people growing the community? So this way, everybody wins. <laughs> um, we have talked with several models on this as well. Um, but we, we try not to make work to become a, a affiliate uh, program yet. Um, because we wanted to keep it as simple as possible. Uh, one of the things is, um, we thought about this as well. So um, let's say, for example, you got 1.4% uh, out of this uh, 100 million, which is, we're talking about uh, um, 140,000, I think so, right? Or is it 1.4 million? Yeah, 1.4 million, because it's 100 million, right? So yeah. 1.4 mil of 100 mil. Um, 1.4 mil, if you were to choose, uh, what we can do is we can actually give out 1% uh, and the rest of the, the 0.4 itself. Um, we talked about this. Um, instead of giving back into the profit pool, okay, we are going to evenly give to the non winners So even though you put your money there, it's actually growing. But if it's bit by bit, but it still grows. Okay, okay, okay. And so you haven't come up with a final decision yet, but you're just finalizing it now, yeah? Yeah, what, one, one thing is uh, we, we try to um, make it uh, sexy enough that um, when you put in like $10, um, you can actually get a, a hundred times return or 1,000 times return if you're lucky kind of thing. <laughs> okay. So, so Ronald, let, let me ask you something, guys. We're coming, guys. Just so everyone's on the call, we're coming to the end of the call. We want to keep this. We wanted to keep this within the mm -hmm. ninety minutes, okay? We want to have a lot of information mm -hmm. in this. So, just to finalize the finalize the call, uh, a lot of people have asked us this because uh, I spent so, a lot of time talking to you, so did many leaders, and we, mm -hmm. you, you you've done very well in the dot com bubble. You've done very well before financially with building mm -hmm. phones. So obviously, you're mm -hmm. in a very good place in your life. So the question is mm -hmm. this, why did you decide to embark on this journey, wanting to develop such a massive ecosystem and help so many people create extra streams of income? Okay, like where did all this come from? Like, because you, you're a family man, we've all checked your Facebook, we see the way you are with your kids. So like, so you starting this project is like nearly 18 to 20 hours a day for the next few years of your life. So, so, so why? The question is why? Uh, I believe that um, actually it started uh, when I was uh, very young, okay? Um, I, I always wanted to make things that uh, other people can actually enjoy to use. Um, and one of it that I uh, thought of was um, how good, uh, if I can actually use, uh, design a phone that everybody would pay for and then use it uh, and I can have whatever that I want to be in there that I'd like to be in there so people can actually enjoy it. Um, it started uh, when I was like um, maybe 17, 18. Um, and from that itself, uh, all this journey, uh, I managed to actually do it. Uh, I uh, uh, dropped everything that I uh, built in, in Malaysia, um, which was quite a lot of uh, leads, contacts and, and stuff to journey into Hong Kong uh, uh, and um, to learn how to make phones in uh, Korea, 
Denmark um, and China then. And uh, basically for the dream to actually um, launch phones that people would buy and use. And it's only when I actually uh, started my own business uh, out from this uh, mobile phone uh, business uh, that uh, I had got in touch with uh, the Indonesian market. Um, 350 million in population, 80% unbanked. And um, we were selling a lot of phones. Uh, I mean, not selling phones. We were selling a lot of um, our, our application to phone manufacturers uh, or, or, or brands into Indonesia. About nine out of 10 phones that is in Indonesia will have our, uh, live, uh, our, our app in there. And um, we always, and one thing that we did inside there is actually we did a, a, a data analysis on who actually bought the phones. And we can see that they are actually in very, very rural kind of areas. And we, I actually went down to this rural area to see how things are. And that um, actually I made a decision. Um, it was about what, seven years then to really um, do a change, uh, how to help these people. Um, but I don't see them, I don't see it as a help. I see it as a very big opportunity because look at it this way, nobody is, is able to reach them at all. If I can actually reach every single one. It's like, you know, when I had this idea in China, I make a million phones and if every day this million phones can give me a dollar, I will have a million dollars a day. You, you know this concept, right? Yeah, so it's the same thing like in Indonesia itself. I have 50 million phones running inside there how can I get them to pay me 10 cents, okay, every day, right? Which we actually did, we did uh, do something like that. And um, frankly, it, it, it worked for a few years. <laughs> so um, it, it's pretty cool. And one thing we want to do was to how to actually uh, get the financially um, excluded to become the financially included. It's a very big piece of um, uh, 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 economy there, okay? And I wanted to give all of this people a voice um, and uh, yeah so from there itself um, it's been stuck with me to actually build something that everybody can use and um, yeah fintech uh, seems to be the buzzword and yeah you know <laughs> so it happened that my company got bought over by a Singapore based company and there it goes <laughs> okay brilliant brilliant okay so um, over to you there Matthias before we close up Okay, guys. Uh, before we close, I want to thanks, uh, thank you, Ronald, for for the question, for the answers to our questions. Uh, guys, myself and Paul, we organized the uh, the Zoom call with uh, Ronald, and we ask deep questions. Not that we we just um, want to ask Ronald this question, it, because we, myself and Paul, we know a lot of already these answers because we've seen uh, Ronald not long ago. And we keep touch with Ronald all the time. But it, the Zoom call was created uh, only for you, that you have, you, you can have full knowledge up after the call. Um, the best, if you, this call, of course, is recorded. So after the call, you will uh, get the recorded from this. So you can watch again, make some notes, so you will have more knowledge about this company. Don't read uh, some informations like, for example, that, um, that CTO is created on, on uh, Etherscan. Mm. on Ethereum blockchain, okay, because it's not true and keep, people keep asking us. So that's why we're asking Ronald very deep questions about the future, about the, the past, about what's happening now, only for your information. And uh, Ronald, thank you so much for being with us, uh, for answering deeply the questions. Uh, Paul, over to you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Matthias, and thank you, Ronald. And guys, uh, what I want to say on uh, uh, closing the call is this. A lot of people in the industry would always, um, no, let me ask a different question. Why are we all in this industry? Why are we here? We're here to make a difference. Uh, a lot of us have done very well in the industry over years. We don't need to do the MLM anymore. A lot of us are new to the industry. A lot of us are helping people. We're all here for different reasons. But if you want to succeed in this industry, <coughs> the trick is this. Get, get in and work with the people who are succeeding, number one, okay? Number two, Come to the live show. If you haven't met Ronald I in person, okay? If you haven't met the man behind the driving seat of this project, okay? Well, then you're missing out. Is when you spend time with Ronald, spend a few hours with Ronald, listen to him, 
hearing, look at the integrity, you'll get belief in the system. Then when you go share this project with your friends and family, they'll see the belief. Guys, we have a huge event, 6,000 people. I never in my life was at a, a networking event with 6,000 people. The most I've been at was two or 3,000 people. We as leaders on this call, we invited leaders from all different groups here today. Why? We were talking to Ronald in, in Poland and we want to create a philosophy from the top down. It doesn't matter whose team you're on. It doesn't matter if you're a Superman team, power team, diamond team. We're here together, guys. We're here to help each other. So like, let's all come to the 5th of uh, October for 6,000 people. Let's all meet together. Guys, we're involved in something very special. I have never seen a man driving a project with so much transparency. There's nothing to hide. Everything's out for all of us. So guys, it's up to each and every one in this call. If you treat this like a part-time job, you get a part-time wage. If you treat it like a full-time job, it will change you and your family's financial life forever. So Ronald, a big thank you. And thank you for everyone for taking the time to come on the call. Guys, I see you all soon. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye.